Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal, uh, brought to you by Unibet, the excellent um, app that they've got, an excellent website. You can jump on there right now and check out some of the brilliant articles, some of it about transfers, some of it about Arsenal, various different teams, and also my brilliant article on there, <laughs> right? Uh, where I talk about three defenders I think Arsenal should sign. If you haven't read that already, the link is in the description. Make sure you check it out. Now, Edu, invincible Edu, should I say, has returned to Arsenal. Um, it's We've known that Arsenal have been after Edu and that Edu has been with the uh, Brazilian national team as the general coordinator and um, done very well. They uh, Brazil won winning the Copa America. And um, now that the Copa America has been completed, the worst kept secret has been confirmed that he has been appointed as the technical director of Arsenal. Now, the former Invincible is going to oversee the first team coaches, the academy, player scouting, and most importantly for us right now, recruitment. Now, remember, um, we had Miss Lintat in there doing um, recruitment. Then um, Miss Lintat surprisingly left um, in January. Then it looked like we were going to be bringing in uh, the legendary Spanish uh, recruitment guy, Monchi, um, from Roma. I mean, he's previously at Sevilla, and you know we all know about his record of bringing in great players. But then he did a U-turn and decided not to take the job. And then Arsenal moved in for Edu. And as I said, Edu was at Brazil as their general coordinator, and now he moves to Arsenal. He has returned back home. And um, he was saying yesterday that he's really, really, in, you know, really, really looking forward to, to doing the job. And now Arsenal's got a special place in his heart. And all sounds fantastic. But he's got a big job on his hands. Um, I like the fact that it's Edu. And, you know, he, he's obviously got a lot of experience. He, he played for Arsenal. And as I said, had that winning mentality because he played for league title winning teams, the invincible team, played with winners, was a winner himself. Um, he was also um, at Corinthians where he did a similar role and oversaw, you know, youth coming through there and, you know, oversaw a very successful per period for Corinthians over there in Brazil as well, um, where they won titles and they, you know, won a lot of things. So again, he's not just coming in off, you know, he's an ex-player, bring him in. He's got a lot of experience in what he's done. And I really hope that what he's going to bring to that whole setup is that winning mentality. That's what we need to get back into Arsenal. At the moment, that's gone. It doesn't seem to have that mentality that we need to win or, you know, we, we, we haven't got that no more. And I, I hope that with his signings and with everything he does and how he recruits through youngsters he brings back that mentality i think arsenal at the moment is lacking an identity as well we were talking about this last season especially away from home what was our identity are we an attacking team are we a defensive team or what are we you know under wenger we knew what we were we were just an attacking all out attack bang right but at the moment i don't really know what arsenal's style is and i'm hoping that you know edu will come through and he will get that blueprint and say, right, this is how it has to be right from your youth team going right up to the first team. But where he's going to be really judged by Arsenal fans is how good he is at recruitment. We know that he had a lot to do with the Gabriel Martinelli sign-in. And um, we've been told that we've signed a wonder kid. We don't know. We'll wait, have to wait and see what Gabriel Martinelli is like. Um, but where he's going to be judged and where it's going to be important is what does Edu do in the transfer market? How is What is his influence there and how successful those transfers are? Now, will he be able to influence Malcolm, who's a fellow Brazilian, um, of course, at Barcelona, previously at Bordeaux, um, to come to Arsenal? Now, Arsenal are said to want Malcolm, um, but on a loan deal. We know that there's this restricted budget that Arsenal have got, and Arsenal apparently would like to um, bring um, Malcolm in on a season-long loan with an option to buy. However, 
you know, Barcelona, they want money. Everton apparently willing to pay in excess of £31 million for Malcolm right now. Now, if you were Barcelona, what are you going to do? You're going to take a loan deal? We're getting your money later on. You're going to take the £31 million now. I know what I do. So, you know, again, this is where Edu comes in. Could he influence Malcolm to say, no, I, I want to, you know, I do not want to go at all to Everton. I want to end up at Arsenal. Or is that the main target? Or could he influence maybe a Zaha or something? This is what's going to be what he's judged on. Um, but Malcolm being linked again with Arsenal today. I don't know if it's just because... Uh, the Brazilian link now. That's what's going to happen now as well, you know. We're going to get linked to every Brazilian going, right? So stand by for that as well. Um, link today for, um, to a player who's uh, not Brazilian, but from the D Dominican Republic. You don't often see players from the Dominican Republic um, in football. But this um, guy, really talented. He's at Real Madrid. Uh, his name is um, Mariano Diaz. He's a striker. And uh, Real Madrid's said to be willing to offload him. Um, you know, they really need to balance the books. They've already spent, you know, nearly £300 million this summer already. Um, so they need to offload some players. And he's said to be one of those players that they're willing to offload. Now, Mariana, Mariana Diaz was uh, originally bought by Real Madrid in 2016. Um, had limited game time and then they ended up selling him to Lyon for £7 million, but they had a clause in the, the contract, Real Madrid, where they could sort of buy him back for a cut price, and he did pretty well, Diaz, over there in Lyon. Um, Real Madrid bought him back for £20 million, but he can't, can't get any type of game time at all in Madrid, um, only uh, making a handful of appearances last season. Um, scored four goals, but just not getting the game time. Now, um, of course... You know, as I said, Real Madrid, they're bringing in loads of players. They've brought in Hazard and other players. They need to sort of balance their books. They need to get rid of some of these players. And apparently Diaz has been offered to Arsenal. Now, will this be something that interests Arsenal? Remember, Danny Welbeck's gone. Um, yes, we've got two strikers, but what happens if, uh, you know, those strikers get injured? I, I see that Eddie Enketi has been um, given a first team berth this season, but you know, you really need four strikers, in my opinion. Could this be something that would interest Arsenal? We'll have to wait and see, but it's out there today. He's been offered to Arsenal. Now, Kieran Tierney, that still rumbles on. And again, another mission for Edu to get sorted. We know that Arsenal definitely want Tierney. They definitely want the left back. This is rumbling on and on and on. Celtic um, were in action yesterday, actually. They beat um, FK Sarajevo. Um, in their Champions League qualifier. Um, Tierney wasn't playing because uh, he's still um, recovering from an injury. Um, but manager Neil Lennon gave a, a bit of an update um, on the situation. And basically, you know, when he was asked about it, he said that there's been no further developments. You know, nothing's really happened with that. Um, nothing's happened further than what everybody knows already. Um, when are we going to get this done? It's said to be 25 million. Jesus Christ, come on, Arsenal, get this done. Now that Edu's in, can Edu push this through so this deal will be done ASAP? Again, that's what we're going to wait and see. Marion Lamina, um, I spoke about this one um, yesterday. Sorry, Mario Lamina, I spoke about this yesterday. Uh, Southampton, 25-year-old. Now, as I said yesterday, both Arsenal and Manchester United have made inquiries about Lamina. Uh, he's valued at about £18 million by Southampton. They want to get rid of him. Um, now, the reports are today that he would prefer to move to Manchester United. That's according to um, a newspaper today, um, the Daily Star, I think it is. I don't know. There doesn't seem to be any source to what they're saying. It could be just speculation, but he prefers to move to Manchester United. Maybe that's based off of the fact that Arsenal were interested in signing uh, Lamina before, but it was turned down by Arsene Wenger. You know, all the, you know, that is actual facts that, you know, before he went to Southampton, he was offered to uh, Arsenal. I remember he was at Juventus, offered to Arsenal and uh, Arsene Wenger turned him down. So maybe that's why Lamina's thinking, well, you know what, they turned me down before, man. I'd rather go Man United. I don't know. And is Lamina the real deal anyway? You know, because you've got to think to yourself, why are Southampton letting him go? 
As I said yesterday, when I've seen him play, I've been like, wow, he's a player. Even when he was at Juventus and they signed him, I was like, yeah, hey, this guy looks, he looks good. But why is Southampton getting rid of him? He seems very inconsistent. And was Wenger right? When he said, you know, he vetoed that because he just said, nah, he's not going to be the type of player. We need someone who's going to produce week in, week out. But it's going to be interesting um, to see how this Lamina thing plays out. But uh, Manchester United is said to be the favourites to um, get Lamina um, ahead of Arsenal. The one player that we have signed, apart, well, apart from Gabriel Martinelli, is William Saliba. Um, it hasn't been announced yet, but everywhere the reports are that the deal is done and that Saliba, um, it's going to cost £27 million, will be loaned straight back to um, St Etienne. But as I was saying yesterday, um, it means that you know it gives Arsenal a bit more of a transfer budget to play with because they're not going to have to pay the bulk of that money until um, next season. So um, expect that to be announced very shortly. Uh, it's funny, we, was, uh, we were talking about this in the office yesterday and having a laugh about this. We're like, um, what kit did they unveil him in? Um, did they unveil him in the, in the new Adidas kit? Or did they unveil him in a kit that's going to be coming out next year? <laughs> or did they, they just put unveil him in a plain Adidas kit and just say new kit to be, you know? Because <laughs> he ain't going to be here till next year, is he? But um, Saliba set to be done um so that will be our second signing of the summer um and christian bielik yesterday on the show i said that bielik um you know leeds really really interested in taking him remember he was originally at, um on loan at charlton last season where we had a really successful time well we hear today that ac milan are also interested in uh, christian bielik um polish a polish player um played in the under 21s recently and also, you know, as I said, uh, did brilliantly for Charlton last season. Um, and AC Milan really interested in him. He can play as a defensive midfielder. He can play in defence where he's been playing very successfully for Charlton. And should Arsenal be looking at him um, to bring him into the defence? That's another question. But Bielik apparently has said to AC Milan that, listen, I want game time. I want to be playing. So... That seems to be a sticking point in that move as well. Um, but it just, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, should we be looking at a Bielik? I mean, we're bringing in Saliba. You know, we've got Bielik here. Had a great time on loan, as I said um, yesterday. What are loans for? And I'm just worried that we could be letting go another player that could be a top player. And that, the Polish Gnabry, you know, not in the position he plays, but just in the... We let a player go and then he goes and does wonders and we're like, oh, why don't we keep him? We need a defender. Who knows? Um, let's get some comments here. SYM, he says, Southampton fan here on Lamina. Interesting, right? He said, the guy is quality. It's clear to see there is a reason he was at Juventus. Um, if he goes to you, he will thrive. Pin this, Robbie, and come back. Novak. Huh? Come back, Novak, to it. I think he maybe says, come back to it. Um, when he takes the league by storm. Happy to respond to any questions from Arsenal fans about him, he also said as well. So jump into that and you can ask him some questions. But if that's all true, why are Southampton letting him go? What's the problem? You know what I mean? That's the other thing, you know, you have to think. When you're signing players, you can't just solely look on the talent on the pitch. And I've, I've heard this before from many scouts that I've spoken to. It's about the guy himself. What's he like behind the scenes? What's his attitude like? Does he train well? Is he a team player? Does he get... All of these things come into play. All of these things are the things that make you produce week in, week out. And I'm just thinking, why are Southampton letting Lamina go? But... And... Um, let's go with this one, last one. Viraj says, Robbie, Lamina won't be a bad target for Arsenal, but if the central midfield is the cause... Maybe the club should go for um, Abdi Decore of Watford, of course. Decore would be a great signing. I think that would be all, if it was a £45 million transfer budget, I think that would be the budget gone. Boom. Right? I think Watford would demand at least about £40 million for Decore. They know he's a top player. Um, so that's probably why you're not seeing Arsenal um, chasing a player like Decore. But I like Decore. 
Um, he's a top, top player. Um, listen, uh, thanks for watching the show today. Uh, next week, Arsenal go to um, America where they're going to be doing their pre-season tour. We are going to be out there. We'll be covering it every step of the way. As a matter of fact, we're going to be heading out to um, America this Thursday. Uh, we're going to be touching down in Las Vegas first. We're going to be teaming up with the guys from 702 Ent. And we're going to be doing some videos and stuff like that out there. If you're an Arsenal fan and you're in Las Vegas, um, you know, um, look out for us. You know, I want to get as many opinions from Arsenal fans as possible when we're in Las Vegas. So we'll be there for a few days. Then moving on to Denver, um, where Arsenal play their first game. And then following Arsenal right throughout their tour of America. So really looking forward to getting out there. I'm going to be doing a Q&A as well um, in Charlotte. Really looking forward to that. Um, it's going to be myself and also Ask Blog um, doing that. So really looking forward to that. So America, here we come. Looking forward to it. But we should be bringing some new signings out there. Edu, get down to business.